Eight and welcome to today's literacy lesson. It's our second extract of travel writing on our literacy workbook, and it is a piece by Mark Moxon. He speaks about um, his trekking experience in the Annapurna Circuit in the Himalayas. So let's get to it. Extract two, Nepal Annapurna Circuit. Nepal freaked me out instantly, in much the same way the cool, silent air does as you leave the rock concert, ears still ringing. Compared to the hustle and bustle of India, compared to the business of India, he means, Nepal feels like a quiet backwater, like a quiet area, okay? The fact that I had to put my watch forward by exactly 15 minutes at the border only emphasizes the difference between India and the mountain kingdom to the north. The mountain kingdom to the north, of course, he means Nepal itself. Even the long bus ride from the Indian border at Sunali to the mountain town of Pokhara is easy. And the loud horns that are so ubiquitous in India are conspicuous by their absence. The loud horns that were everywhere and very common in India are now um, very, their, their absence is very clear, okay, conspicuous by their absence. A fellow traveler told me that after India, anywhere would appear mundane, anywhere would appear boring. But what did Mark say? He said, but I'm not sure that's such a bad thing. After all, sitting in a comfy chair in front of the fire and flicking channels is pretty mundane. But after a long day trekking through the fire and ice of the real world, it's a dream, right? Indeed, indeed, he said, trekking is my main goal in Nepal. That's his main goal, right? And that's why I headed straight for Pokhara instead of Kathmandu, the capital city. The Annapurna Conservation Area to the north of Pokhara, itself in the western half of Nepal, contains some of the most dramatic trekking on the planet, and I had my sights firmly fixed on the three-week Annapurna circuit. What does he say about the Annapurna circuit? A circular route that crosses a very high path, okay, it's called the Tharang La, uh, which is uh, 5,460 meters above sea level, trundles down the deepest gorge in the world and provides mountain views to stifle breath. They're breathtaking. This already short in the high altitude of the Himalayas. So what he's saying is basically the views are... Uh, the mountain views are breathtaking while you already don't have breath. Why? Because you're in such a high altitude, right? Because the higher you go, the less oxygen there is. After beaches, rainforests, deserts, volcanoes, and glaciers, it's time for the big cheese. It's time for the big challenge. The Himalayas are, of course, huge, but reading about them is considerably different than experiencing them firsthand. On a trek like this, there are not only the usual walkers' concerns of blisters, twisted ankles, upset stomachs, and sunburn, but also acute mountain sickness. Now, what is acute mountain sickness? It's an ailment brought on by hot altitude that is fatal, it's deadly, it can kill you if unchecked, and which still claims trekkers' lives today. On the surface, the Annapurna circuit sounds like the biggest challenge of them all. It isn't all challenge, though, and this is a major part of its appeal. Unlike most of the trekking I've done up to this point, you don't need to carry food because you stop in the villages along the way, staying at the local hotels. Now, what does this mean? This also means you don't need to carry a tent, cooker, fuel, or any of the other gear associated with self-sufficient wilderness walking, which leaves a pack pleasantly light and the accommodation comfortable. So what is Mark saying? He says a major part of its appeal is that it's not all talent. So what's up, right? Um, he says you can stop, you can stay in local hotels, so you don't need to carry a cooker or fuel or any of the other things that you need to carry with you, which makes accommodation comfortable and it makes your, your trek light, right? On a three-week trek, this is godsend. The thought of a pack laden with 21 days of survival gear is enough to make most people's knees spring a leak in sympathy, mine included. Laden means like uh, loaded. Imagine like carrying a bag with 21 days worth of the gear that you need to survive. That is very heavy. It also means that I have to reappraise my attitude towards long distance walking. He has to rethink to reevaluate his attitude. I've been on so many walks that require serious effort and long days to get anywhere. Taman Nagara, Holyford Pike, and Ganang Rinjani, to name but three. Okay? Uh, that he that I've developed an attitude problem. He's saying that he, he has an attitude problem and he needs to reappraise it. 
Now, what is it? I like to go fast, to push myself, to get fit, to be the first at the destination. And in Annapurna, this isn't just a waste of the ambience of the village inns and the beauty of the mountain views. It's foolhardy. You're going to ruin the atmosphere. You're going to ruin the whole aura of the, of the village and of the journey and of the trek. It's foolish, it's foolhardy to do this. The best way to avoid AMS is to acclimatize slowly to the altitude, to slowly adapt to the altitude. So do, zooming up the peaks, going fast up the peaks, like you're zooming a screen, for example, is simply dumb. Altitude requires a different attitude. There is no doubt about it. This type of trekking has its ups and downs in more than just a literal sense. The impact of tourism on this earth's well netherworld is plain to see. Right. So this area used to be like um, another world is like uh, hell. OK, Earth swallow means former. So it's getting better. I mean, it used to be a terrible place. He, that's why he said hell. But now it's it's getting better. Um, now, he said uh, the impact of tourism is plain to see piles of bottles like cracking the searing sun, candy wrappers, litter, a number of the paths in the local culture. It's hard to separate from the hotel in, from the service industries of hotel and restaurant. Now, everything is like mixed up, like the hotels and the um, uh, local areas and the residency areas. They're all in the same area. Uh, on the plus side, though, income is higher, ecological awareness is increasing, and the literal problem is nothing compared to India or Indonesia. An impressive feat when you consider the sheer number of people involved. All right. Uh, so this is a very nice blog. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot more simpler than the last piece that we read, uh, the one by Lucy Bird. Uh, it's also nice and it's interesting to read about. Uh so this is it for Annapurna Circuit. Then we have the questions, uh, also inference questions. Think of the words, the meaning of the words from the text. And then we have um, all of the questions up to question 10. And this is it for today's piece. Thank you, Eight. If anybody has a question, I'm right here.